गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टूडे टॉपिक इज स्कोलियोसिस 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 इज वन ऑफ द स्पाइनल डिफॉर्मिटी इट इज कैरेक्टराइज बाय अबनॉर्मल रेटरल कर्वेचर ऑफ द स्पाइन Ancient Greeks were the first one to discover scoliosis in around 400 BC. They, for the long time, they have considered it as orthopedic disease. Therefore, nobody have come up with the proper treatment. As of now, there is no proper effective treatment to treat scoliosis. However, over the years, there are so many uh, treatment which has been developed to prevent the, its adverse effects. According to a study. The prevalence of scoliosis is approximately 470 to 5200 per 1 lakh individuals worldwide. Patients of all age groups may develop scoliosis. The female to male ratio is approximately 1.5 is to 1 to 3 is to 1 for idiopathic scoliosis. Two types of scoliosis commonly seen which are structural and non structural in structural scoliosis the spine does not correct itself when bending on the convex side but in non structural scoliosis spine corrects itself when the patient bends on the convex side okay. so there are three basic categorization of scoliosis one is your idiopathic congenital and neuromuscular so idiopathic is uh, consists of around 10 to 5% of all the scoliosis pediatric scoliosis cases comes under the idiopathic where it is 80 to 85% of all the spinal deformities are occurs okay so it can be defined again as infantile juvenile and Uh, adolescent so infant that age group it is classified based on the onset of age okay so infant that being 3 years of age and juvenile being 4 to 8 years of age and 9 to 18 years adolescent so the complication what we see in scoliosis basically a pulmonary dysfunction okay so the pulmonary dysfunction may increase the risk of morbidity and early mortality in children Diagnosis of pathology of scoliosis is lateral curvature of a part of the spine. The curvature which forms initially due to the scoliosis is called the primary curve. To compensate for that, another curve is formed in the opposite direction called a secondary curve. This curve helps us understand the severity of scoliosis. Okay. Diagnosis of scoliosis can be done by physical observation, where you tend to see the lateral curvature of the spine in an individual, scoliotic individual. Other than that, we can do some physical examination, which is called as Adams forward bend test, where you tend to ask the patient to bend forward and you check for the alignment, shoulder alignment or shoulder symmetrical length. Then we have something called as Cobb's method, where you tend to see the Cobb's angle for the severity of the scoliosis, where The Cobb's angle is the angle made by the line passing from the primary curve, as well as the line which is passing from the secondary curve, and the angle measured is called as Cobb's angle. Now the grading of the Cobb's angle is given as mild, moderate, and severe. Where mild is considered as 10 to 25 degree of Cobb's angle, moderate is considered as 25 to 40 degree of Cobb's angle, and severe is considered as anything more than 40 degree of Cobb's angle. and for anything more than 40 degree of cops angle we require surgical intervention in association with scoliosis many orthopedic complications can be seen such as back pain and compression to other visceral organs where compression to other visceral organs can be seen if the curve progresses to more than 50 degrees uh, now we are going to discuss about uh, orthopedic complications of scoliosis commonly if we see basically surgery is commonly it is performed as uh, compression methods distraction methods and uh, growth plate methods so each uh, method where the surgeon chooses uh, to correct the scoliosis has a different perspectives and uh, prognosis and each and everything is associated with the severe deformities and these deformities mainly depending upon the type of angle the rib vertebral angle and uh, corps angle depending upon the severity the treatment chooses and each and every procedure has its own complications it can varies from meningeal irritation it can varies from uh, neurological deficits it can uh, vary uh, varies from the muscle imbalances 
So first, when a surgeon selects the patient, first he need to select a basic criteria for what is the angle. If angle is uh, greater than 50 degrees, then obviously they have to go for a surgical correction, depending on whether they are using the tethering method or whether they are using the distraction method. So distraction method, if you use, you can use a Harrington rod fixation method. And if you use a, a compression method, they are using vertebral stapling method. All this depending upon the progress and nature of the curve that going to come. So each one is associated with, sometimes there can be a double curves with the thoracic spine and with the uh, lumbar spine. So in those cases, there are much of uh, cardiovascular complications, thromboembolic uh, complications and some sort in severe cases. So it can lead to a meningeal irritation where it can be a long term process of rehabilitation will tend to take place. And as a part of a team from surgeon to a therapist, each and everyone has an individual role in correcting and maintaining and each and everything is associated with cost. So hence, uh, keeping all this in mind, each one has to, along with the family, they have to work as a team in order to get a better rehabilitation program for uh, scoliosis. And the best available method for treating scoliosis is Sproth method. So you can use it for uh, surgical options or you can uh, use it for a functional and non-functional scoliosis methods. Along with the orthopedic complications, scoliosis can cause cardiopulmonary complications too. Due to the compression of the lungs, scoliosis can cause breathing problems. Sir, can you explain uh, cardiopulmonary implications and uh, physiotherapy con considerations for scoliosis? Okay, for scoliosis, uh, some of the cardiopulmonary or respiratory implications may be like reduced lung capacity because of the posture. Then there can be restricted chest wall movements. Then with this, there will be altered breathing patterns. And uh, this will bring about increased work of breathing. And uh, then you can have thereby ventilation perfusion mismatch. So these are ideally the common things that you can come across people with the scoliosis. So having said that, the physiotherapy considerations uh, to manage scoliosis from, or the respiratory physiotherapy considerations to manage scoliosis on this behalf uh, should be focused at uh, maintaining good lung volumes and capacities. So all the techniques that in that uh, can be utilized for um, uh, in, uh, increasing lung volume uh, may be applied thereby we should also see that the patient does not get into any infections or complications such that their work of breathing is altered so we need to actually uh, have their work of breathing under control so you can have utilized techniques to improve uh, lung volumes and capacities like breathing exercises, uh, postural correction, chest mobilization techniques if it is required and then um, respiratory muscle training as and when it is required. Or in all these things one of the most uh, uh, important points that needs to be considered is uh, respiratory monitoring. So make sure that they are monitored and their aerobic conditioning is maintained well or they are conditioned well and uh, at the same time the most important is educate them about the conditions and the consequences. Uh, so they constantly uh, remember or they are reminded about what they need to do and what they are not to do and how they can prevent. This is some points in, these are some points in brief. Thank you sir. You're welcome. As its severity depends on the angle of curvature, its management also varies with angle. So coming to the mild and moderate case of scoliosis, where the conservative treatment is mainly focused by doing physiotherapy, where we focus on giving a brace called CTLSO, which is Milwaukee's brace. Coming to the severe case of scoliosis, severe part. So usually it is managed by using a surgical intervention where laminectomy, spinal fusion and spinal osteotomy has been done. Coming to the physiotherapy part, we focus on 
reducing the deformity of the spine and strengthening the spinal and paraspinal muscles. So coming to the pain part, so we usually give IFT and TENS for the pain. Post-surgical management, there are some complications which may arise. The scoliosis need a spinal fusion surgery. When it is recommended is when the corpse angle is greater than 40 degree. But this surgery has a lot of uh, surgical risk where the patient may end up with paraplegia that is it loss of sensation or movement in the lower body and he may have excessive loss of blood uh, loss and the blood transmission is needed for them according to the procedure has to be maintained and other risk is their surgery may go failure in the individual. So the fusion surgery makes by the patient uh, to have a benefits that uh, they have the careful consideration and after which the proper physiotherapy follow-up has to be maintained so that they can be lead a life with the uh, what we say the scoliosis can be troubling scoliosis can be avoided in the patient. Every year on June 30th, the world comes together to observe Scoliosis Awareness Day, a day dedicated to raising awareness about this prevalent yet often misunderstood spinal condition. On this day, let's educate ourselves and others about the incidents and causes of scoliosis, available treatment options and recent advances in scoliosis management. Let's hold hands together in spreading awareness about scoliosis and supporting those affected. Together, we can make a difference.